Hello YouTube and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be doing the quarterly emergency lighting inspection. So let's go ahead and get started. So up here I actually have a new exit sign location. I just installed this back in January, but this is a new exit sign spot um, where I have a dual light, LES something something, AC only edge lit exit sign. So this one's installed right above the patio door. There is actually an exit here. It goes out to the uh, patio, but looks really nice. I have the box recessed behind the ceiling. At one point, I did have an exit sign on this access panel, but as you can see, it's kind of off center. It looked really weird. So I'm glad to actually have a real legit exit sign spot here. Um, like I said, this one's AC only. So when the power goes out, uh, it just turns off, but that's not really a concern. You can see it has red LEDs illuminating this acrylic panel from the edge, hence the name edge lit exit sign. So yeah, a really elegant looking unit. Going over to this exit here, I have this dual light dynamo series exit sign combo. This is a self diagnostic unit, which means that if you push it, it'll do a self test like this. And also it has these service alert codes. So for example, let's say a battery dies, the light will start blinking twice in red to tell you that. So it's kind of cool. It also tests itself this is a LED exit sign in red, like I said. It's kind of cool, actually. Um, it's designed to be abused. So, for example, if you put this in a gym or something, that'd be a good application for this. Um, I'm trying to see what I can throw at it. I guess I could throw this big red ball. But actually, no, I don't want to do that because that's going to damage the wall. I can use this little green ball from the basketball hoop for this. So let's go ahead and just... There you go. And it's fine. For some of the cheaper units, uh, that might have knocked off the faceplate or something, but this thing is shielded by plastic and the housing is made of cast aluminum. So that's kind of cool. And it has some really bright lamp heads on it. If we go this way, you can see we have a unconventional emergency light. You might be thinking, what is that? There's no test button on it. There's no AC indicator. You don't see an obvious place where a battery compartment might be. And the reason for that is this unit does not have a battery in it. It's not even an emergency light, it's just a remote head. So this is a dual light ELSS um, central system, emergency lighting system. So this is just a remote head on it. You can see it has this LED bar at the bottom, which lights up the space. It looks a little wonky because the, the lights are aiming down, but these, um, I don't know what they're called. I think the optics on them are super, super good. So it kind of just spreads the light absolutely everywhere. I mean, it goes down and like all the way there and then also all the way down to that wall. Um, it actually, it's really, really intense if you look at it from the side. So like, for example, if this unit was on right now and you looked at it like straight into it like that way, that's probably where it'd be the most intense. Like if you stand here, it's not too bad, but these units are really, really bright. And also they look quite nice because you can see it has a really low profile on the ceiling here, but that's that. If we go into this room, I have another one of those units, except in black housing, once again, can see this one's on a access panel on the ceiling. I just replaced this access panel to make it look nice. You can see I routed the edges and everything. The uh, old access panel was just made of some stupid fiber board, so it looked pretty terrible. And then over here, I have a dual light ELSS exit sign. So this is part of the dual light evolution series of products, but you can see this isn't a self-contained unit. This unit is powered by the inverter and it also goes into the emergency mode when the uh, inverter goes into emergency mode. So it's just one pair of wires going to this sign um, and it just runs back to the inverter. If we go into the utility room, you can see we have another one of these emergency light fixtures. You can see this is a, uh, I don't know what it is necessarily. I think it's a NEMA 4X rated emergency lighting fixture. Um, again, it's just a set of remote heads. So inside of this box, there's actually nothing. It's just a couple wiring connections, but um, this would be designed for hazardous locations. In this case, it's in the boiler room because that's the closest to a hazardous location I have. Um, but these heads are really, really bright. And then finally, I have another dual light ELSS exit sign. And uh, this one is above the door. So you can see we have pretty much all dual light out here today. And then finally, this is the central unit right here. This is the big bubba. Um, inside of here, if I can pop it open, this has a huge battery in it and you can see how it's wired. Um, I did a video on the installation here, but if you hit the test button, this stuff will go into emergency mode. And once again, you can see it's the most intense when you look at it this way. I mean, it actually hurts your eyes. When you look at it this way, it also scatters light, but it, it goes really far. It's kind of the point. You can see the, the light on the door. Forgot to mention this one. I have a wet location emergency light in here. This is one of those outdoor sconces. This is supposed to mount outside of an exit door um, and indicate that 
are not indicated. It's supposed to mount like, let's say this was an exterior exit. It would mount outside of that door just to light the uh, stairs or whatever, or walkway outside of the exit, just because that's a requirement in most jurisdictions. But I decided to put it in a bathroom because it's probably the most close to a wet location. But yeah, let's go ahead and turn the power off for real. It's actually kind of interesting that with the dual light products, when I turn off the power, what you'll see is that all of the lights are going to turn off for about two seconds, and then the emergency lights are going to turn on. It's actually kind of a cool effect in my opinion, but let's go ahead and turn off the power at the breaker panel. So here we are. Three, two, one. All lights are out. Check that out. This thing lights all the way back there. You can see the beam goes over, all the way over here. It's quite bright. I mean, if you look at it from here, it's really impressive for such a small unit. I mean, this space is quite well lit. If you go into the bathroom, this place is like the sun. Of course, this exit sign is off, but it really doesn't matter because the uh, light from the emergency lights makes it visible anyways. Then this unit is quite bright. You can see it has the EVHC optics, so it's really, really performance. A really, really high performance. <laughs> really, really performance. Let's go into the uh, small room here see this thing does really good again you can really see how strong the beam is from the side because you look at how much of a radiance there is on the wall but man that does hurt to look at and of course this exit sign is lit because it's an exit sign this room is really really well lit these um this thing needs to be quiet see there's an ac fault in the system but this exit sign is lit this unit here is really, really bright, and I guess the thing that makes it really nice is the lamps are kind of spot type, so you can adjust them wherever, like that. But, uh, I mean, this thing is wicked bright. It's basically one of those high output EVHC units, except in a remote head. But yeah, and of course, the battery pack has a yellow light on, which means it's currently feeding emergency units. I think this battery pack with the massive battery inside of it will feed these emergency lights for many many hours because these are designed for buildings where you have uh, larger branch circuits with several different units and in this case i only have two exit signs and what four emergency lights so it should last many many hours much more than the uh 90 minutes that you'd expect the overall very cool system and then once we turn the power on you'll notice that the lights continue to stay on this is part of their um i think it's like a blackout protection feature because in a lot of cases power will kind of fail but then flicker on and off so this stays on to allow the mains power to um continue to boot up because in some cases in a building when the power comes back um, a lot of lighting fixtures and things like that take what like five minutes to get back on so all of these fixtures are going to stay on but you can just cancel this by pushing the test button and then the lights turn off same thing over here. All I have to do is just walk over, push the test button, and the lights should turn themselves off. Here in the garage, I have a dual light EV2 emergency light. This right here is a two lamp battery backup emergency lighting fixture. You can see if we push to test, it has LED lamps, pretty decent. This is a lower output emergency light, so it has to be um, used somewhere where it's closer to the ground, probably good for smaller bathrooms and things like that. If you want a high output version of this, You'd want a EVHC, so that's what you'd specify if you were maybe installing emergency lights uh, high up in a warehouse, because um, that's where you want the far spacing, very powerful emergency lights. But this is just a junior unit, um, and in this case, all it's doing is lighting the pathway between this door and that door, so it does a good job. So let's go ahead and test this in emergency. Here it is in emergency mode, as you can see. It's a pretty run-of-the-mill emergency light. I mean, it's definitely decent because it's made by dual light. But you can see the uh, lamps are adjusted kind of towards the path of egress. Fortunately, with these um, kind of emergency lighting heads where they're kind of in a socket, you can't really go any lower than this. So it's about as much as I can adjust it. But I mean, it gets the job done. You can see your path. That's what I mean. Um, again, it doesn't light up that far because it's not designed to do that. But um, something like an EVHC would be good if you wanted to light an entire massive garage like this.
Here we are upstairs. You can see I have an EVHC emergency light up here. So this is actually the big version of what you just saw. It's actually kind of funny that I have this up here in a bedroom where you really don't need such a high output unit. And I have these smaller EV2 out in the garage. They should probably be swapped. But this one actually has self-diagnostics or Spectron. And uh, as you can see, the optics are insanely bright, a lot brighter than the EV2. Because again, this is a high output unit. But there it is. I'll turn off the light so you can see what it's like. I mean, this thing lights up absolutely everything. It's actually astronomical. It, it goes into the hall here and lights up this. You can even kind of see out here, but um, it's definitely a really high-end unit. This is something that you'd probably find uh, really high up in a warehouse or something like that. Or if you want to put it in a hallway or something like that, you can achieve really far spacing. Because again, when the architect makes a plan or the engineer or whoever, um, they have to specify emergency lights to cover a certain amount of space. And for a smaller unit like the EV2 or a small, um, I don't know, Lithoni EU2C, um, any of the lower end emergency light fixtures, they're only rated for like what, 10 foot mounting height and 10 foot spacing. So you need a lot of, you need a lot of units to cover a smaller or the same amount of space. Whereas with something like this, I think you can space this at like 80 feet or something like that. I don't know if that's correct because I haven't seen a data sheet. But um, you get the point, you can use less units and cover the same amount of space, which is why these units are desirable in some cases. Well, that's gonna do it for today. Thank you for watching. Please do like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this yappuccino here about exit signs and emergency lighting, because I sure did enjoy making this. But yeah, thank you for watching and take care.